My name is Hervin and this is day number 49 of the Daily Journal video series where every day I come on and I document here our journey as we try and scale our company. I also share anything cool, any lessons that I find along the way. And so let's dive right into it. Right now it is, it is 10.34 p.m. Central Time. We're in Austin, Texas. Just finished here our last day of this mastermind program that we were on for the last two days we got a chance to hang out with so many awesome entrepreneurs very successful entrepreneurs hear their story super motivational in the sense of you know you're listening to entrepreneurs who are way ahead of you in terms of revenue employee size listening to their stories their success stories listening to their struggles and seeing you know what's ahead kind of like in the mountain of in, in this mountain that is called entrepreneurship where you're every day you're climbing trying to improve your company trying to grow and there are people ahead of you and and it's really it's cool it's intimidating to see kind of the next steps of the journey to grow to where we want to be there's a couple of entrepreneurs here that had companies that were doing over 10 million and just being able to see where they're at, what problems they're struggling with is, yeah, it was super insightful, really motivational. So um, grateful that we got a chance to spend this time here with these entrepreneurs and learned a lot. I'm looking over here because I'm looking at my notes. So the first, the first thing that I want to talk about here is just giving employees. So, one of the things that the person running the mastermind was talking about is how the difference between kind of the entrepreneur and the employees, like the entrepreneur wants novelty. They want change. They want to create new things. They want new, they, they have a lot of new ideas. They want to implement, they want to grow the business. They want to shake things up. Whereas like an employee, they want stability. They want clarity. They want to know, they, they don't want to have to figure it out and, and not know what's expected of them. They want clarity. They want things to be, uh, yeah, just absolutely clear about how to how to have success in their role. And this is something that I feel like we're going to need to spend a little bit of time thinking about and just defining here really well for our employees, making sure that we're communicating the expectations about their roles every week, making sure that we have here clear, documented, um, roles, responsibilities, requirement results that we that we're expecting a moment and just letting them know so that way they're aware they know how to be successful. And that's that was one of the main topics or one of the main takeaways for me was just we got to make sure that our employees we you know we're we're letting them know exactly what we expect of them and how they how to be successful so they you know we we don't have them guessing or something like that about where, what they need to be doing and so on. And so, yeah, that's the first thing. Um, talking about the, the trend about employees, this thing came up with one of the entrepreneurs that was inside the program this week where they talked about how they had an employee who was not really contributing to the company. In fact, they were actually holding the company back. They were toxic, toxic. They were gossiping behind the, they were gossiping about the entrepreneur behind the entrepreneur's back. Um, and the entrepreneur knew that, but was second guessing themselves to see if second guessing themselves, thinking about if they should let go of that person or not and one of the things that it made me think is we had a it, it wasn't like that to that degree it was just an employee that didn't end up working out with us and it took us such a long time to just finally say to ourselves like you know what this person is better if we let them go like they they've helped us in some way but they also they they're also in a way, not being a good team player, and we knew that, 
and it took us a, a while to decide to let go of this person, even though, you know, it might have been obvious from the outside. Because when, when we were, this is why I'm telling this story, is because when this entrepreneur was t telling their story when we were in in a group together, it was pretty, to her, it wasn't that obvious, but to the to anybody looking from the outside, the decision to let go of this person was extremely obvious. And so anyway, just wanted to say, to, to document here that sometimes, um, you know, we know what, it, we know what we need to do, but just getting ourselves to do it. And, you know, it, it's a hard decision. And one of the main lessons here that the person running this mastermind, um, and this is the framework that I want to document here. One of the things that he said is that when trust is broken, it's time to move on. So if you if you know you have an employee that you feel like you can't trust them anymore, and that's gone too far, and and that's kind of hard. You know, if you have an employee who you can have a conversation and you can still trust that that they can improve, they could get better. That's fine. But when you don't feel like when you've essentially lost trust, that's when it's time to move on. And so I thought that that was a really good framework for thinking about it because that's how we were feeling back when, you know, like many, many, many months ago when we had this employee is that it got to the point where we felt like we couldn't trust her, but we still weren't sure, like, should we give her a chance? Should we not? Like, it just, the decision wasn't clear. And so, um, yeah, that framework really helps. And so, yeah, that, that's something here that I want to document. The other thing that I wanted to talk about here is that I watched, I've been watching this videos about how to learn. And is this YouTuber called Justin Sung, and he talks about methodology, like how to study. And, and it's a general how to study like YouTube channel where he talks about studying techniques. And primarily, I think the, the people who watch his videos are people who are like st studying to get into medical school, law, law school, or things like that, where they have to study study a lot and what he was describing in this video it was him talking about how there's a lot of people who you know think that hard work is the way to get good grades like the harder you study the more hour the more the more hours the more time you put in the better your grades are going to be so he has this story about how he became the top of his class for this, I think it was a master's program or something like this with like a sixth of the work that everybody else was putting in. So he was doing, he was, he was doing not half, not a third of the work, but one sixth of the word of the work that the other people were putting in. So he was studying, I think he took, and I can't, and forgive me for messing up the numbers, but I think he studied a total of like eight hours or something like that in the whole program. Whereas like there were people who were full time studying who quit their work to study, to, to dedicate themselves to just study, um, to pass this thing. And so what he says is that, you know, if you have the, you can study real hard, but if you're using the wrong studying technique, and not many people know this, that there are many different studying techniques. Like for me, I didn't know there were many studying techniques. If you study using the wrong techniques, it doesn't matter how much hard work you put in, you're still going to, you, you're not going to, essentially, you're not going to get very far. On the other hand, using the right studying techniques, you can save so much time and and get ahead with doing less work and so what that made me think of because I, I try to think of commonalities among different areas different domains 
And, you know, that, that concept of hard work not being the answer is something that feels is a, I feel like it's applicable to so many different areas. And, you know, you obviously have that, that, um, story about the person, two people cutting down trees, one person takes five hours and they're just like with a, with an ax, they're cutting down the trees. So, you know, it, it, the story, the story goes, it's like, you have five hours to cut the tree. Um, one guy just goes in there with a dull ax and just starts beating on the tree the, and, and takes him five hours. The other guy uses the first three hours to sharpen the ax and then cuts the tree down in, in, in like an hour or something like that. And so anyway, it's just talking about efficiency and talking about, you know, if you, if you do the right thing, you don't need to, or you can be effective, more effective by doing the right thing. And to me, I've been thinking of, uh, about that for our situation inside our business where it feels like we're working really hard and there's almost not, not much more work that, to give. Like there's still a lot of work that needs to be done, but not enough time to physically do all of the work. And it just feels like we're not getting ahead of it. And it just feels like there's so much coming at us and... It, it it just seems like for us, the, the way we've been trying to handle this is just by working harder. And when I hear this, when I heard that video about hard work isn't the answer when it comes to studying, I'm like, I wonder if there's a different way that we could be doing things that can make it so much easier for us internally where we wouldn't have to, like, work as hard. Like, is there... Is, do we need to hire more people with put the right processes in place? Like, obviously those are the answers, but yeah, I mean, it just feels like whenever you're working so hard, you must be doing something wrong. Like something has to change. You're probably doing the wrong things. And so just, again, that's something to document over here today. Last is this concept, kind of similar tied to what I just said, but another concept that was brought up um, that made me think was uh, the person running this mastermind program. One of the things that he, he talked on, he talked about is that simple scales, complexity cl creates constraint. And so in order for us to have a scalable business, we need to figure out how to simplify everything and that is something that i'm gonna have to just put my mind to here and and us as a team are going to need to put our minds to figure out how to make everything simpler so anyway that's it that's all i've had i have for today thank you all so much for listening uh i'll see you all tomorrow bye